We're here today in, uh, I guess, uh, the, the movie making part of London, or te television making part of London, where uh, the artistic uh, voices and, uh, and minds of the UK's creative industry will gather. However, today is a day of documentaries, here because we're here to make our own little documentary with the great Paul Feig. Cool. How are you? Thank Lovely you to see friend. you. Always great to see you. Always great to see you. Um, I'd like to say that it's it's novelty us, us seeing each other, but now you've moved to London and uh, to to make a film. Yes. You're making um, the uh, the School of Good and Evil, mm -hmm. uh, but you're taking a, a brief um, uh, sojourn uh, away from that to help us talk about the new drink that we've worked on together today. Yes, and I'm very excited. I'm very excited too. It's here. It's finally here. It's taken a while. Uh, so usually with these kind of things, I would not not be in shot. However, Paul is a competitive type, and if I'm honest, so am I. And he and I have uh, what must be best described as, I guess, a blood feud yes. over a game of backgammon. Yes. So we will be talking today about the process of creating this uh, wonderful collaboration over a game of backgammon. So bets on, may the best man win. Thank you, sir. Here we go. Let's go back a bit because your um, uh, your journey doesn't really start with our Negroni here. It goes a bit further back. You created a gin brand called Arting Stalls, yes. which is going to be in our Negroni. But tell me before that about Arting Stalls, how you um, established the brand, why you did it, yeah. um, and what it is uh, that you find so enticing about sort of the gin and, uh, and booze culture. Yeah, I mean, I um, to me... Drinking and cocktails and all that really represents adult life. Uh, when I was a kid, um, I was taken to Las Vegas by my parents. They went to see a fight. I was about, um, I don't know, five, I think. And we went through the beautiful casino, and people were, at that time, dressed in tuxedos and gowns and, and, and on the casino floor. And I was taken to this nursery where I was put into this nursery that had a glass door that looked out on the casino floor. And so I was like a prisoner in there. And I remember as a five-year-old saying, God is my witness, when I grow up, I will be those people living that life. And so when I got, I became an adult, uh, did all my kind of um, research on martinis and found out that actually a real martini is a gin martini. At the time, I didn't really like gin because I, you know, as a kid, you take a swig when you're down in somebody's parents' basement and it tastes like like pine cleanser or something. Yeah, yeah. But I, was like, I have to like it because, so I kind of, started to drink it and realized I did like it, but there was old fashioned ones that were super piney, that super juniper forward. And I started looking around for other ones that weren't so much that way. Found other tastes that I liked, but I always said like, if I could invent my own gin, I know exactly what I wanted to taste like. And so eventually was able to do that by uh, hooking up with this company, uh, Minhas, uh, which is out of uh, Calgary. And we came up with Arting Souls, and uh, I formulated the recipe with them. I designed the bottle for them. I wanted something that looked classic that everybody would want on their bar cart, uh, and also a gin that would be an entry-level gin for people who didn't think they liked gin, but also gin lovers would like to. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> it's, it's it, yeah, I'm telling you, loaded <laughs> dice. He's got the loaded. Yeah. <laughs> the rake gives you a call one day. Mm -hmm and says, Paul, we're creating a, uh, a, a pre-made Negroni mm. um, as part of what seems to be a kind of growing culture with regards not just cocktails, but Negronis as well, certainly within the Rake's ecosystem. Can you tell me about that, that process and uh, why you thought it was a nice thing to get involved with? Yeah, well, it was, Waco and I uh, are both kind of Negroni fanatics and uh, we've had many a night t together when we'll be sitting at the bar ordering Negronis, talking about that. Our love of the Negroni is, has always been there. And, um, and when he called me up about, hey, let's do a pre-bottled one, I was really excited about that because even though the Negroni is probably the simplest cocktail to make, because it's just one part to one part to one part, I was so honored to be able to make my recipe, you know, that I did with Way, um, into something uh, that, that would be sold through my favorite magazine of the world, The Rake. So thank you very much. It's very honest. Bang! I'm very telling honest. you. Very honest. Is it my turn? It is your turn. Oh, thank you. So, so tell me something about the decanters that we use for this, because obviously that creates that sort of uh, opulent Edwardian. Uh, aesthetic. You realize presentation is as much as a part of it as the gin itself. You know, when I go to a liquor store and I'm looking at all the new gins that are out, I'm drawn to the bottle first and foremost yeah. because gin is just clear. You can put water in there. Yeah. You know, I knew that I wanted a bottle that was going to be different. 
but I wasn't quite sure. And so Ravinder and I were talking about it a lot. And Ravinder was the first one that said, like, well, what about a decanter? And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. I love that. So then I went on this sort of trip of trying to figure out what it would be. And then one day I was walking past this secondhand store and saw this a, a decanter in, in the window. So I went in and bought it and sent it to Ravinder, took the basic design, it had these etchings on it. It was very old. And so that what we ended up with is something that was my goal, which is everybody's gonna want it on their bar cart. Mm. He's brutal. I am, well, I'm stacking up candlesticks there, yeah. which is not my favorite way to play. So drinking's not my area of expertise. Right. So could you perhaps tell us about the Negroni number one mm -hmm. in terms of the the actual the, the, the final result. We always design trying to get rid of the things we don't like about other pre-existing designs or, or products. And for me, my problem with a Negroni a lot of times is that it can just be too sweet. What I wanted to do with my Negroni is make one that's a little different than what people are used to, but keep all the elements that they obviously like. Um, for me, even though I really like Campari, I wanted to change up the, 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 the Italian bitter, and there's so many other Italian bitters out there in the world. And so I have one that I use, it's my sort of my secret uh, ingredient, uh, and that's in here. And then uh, with the sweet vermouth, I just wanted to um, use one that had a little more a little more bottom end, a little more interesting kind of spiciness to it. And so uh, that's what I use in this also. And then, of course, Ardingstall's gin, the world's greatest gin. I mean, it's, it's, it's a trifecta of brilliance, isn't it? <laughs> it is, really. Do you think that actually there is a great sort of Negroni movement? Lots of people are kind of turning to it as a, yeah. as a great cocktail. I think, I think the, the Negroni movement is real, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> and. Um, for, for a few reasons. First of all, it's a very elegant elegant drink. It's a delicious drink, so there you go. Mm. But also, it, if you are getting into making cocktails, it's one of the easiest drinks in the world to make. I mean, you don't, you don't have to shake it. You basically, if you've got one jigger, you don't even need a jigger, just need a shot glass of the equal size, you know, of one size, and then you put, you know, three different uh, shots of the same, um, you know, it, normally it's one ounce, yeah. uh, you know, amount of liquid into a glass over ice and stir it and you're done. And, but you've made a, a very impressive cocktail that's also delicious. Yes. So I think there's something about that that's very elegant versus having to pull out a shaker and have all the equipment and all that kind of thing that uh, makes it very um, of the people, you know, so it's a, it's a very, um, you know, it's accessible. A, it's drink. a democratic drink. It's a revolutionary drink. It's it a is, drink it for, is. It's exactly. power to the people. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yep. Okay, excellent. <laughs> I should say that this clear victory yes. isn't, wasn't the plan. I was hoping, <laughs> he was hoping to that, throw the game. that our host <laughs> might, might, might defeat me. Uh. Now, perhaps my skills at backgammon are such that whatever one might do to cheat doesn't quite work. But I should also point out that this is an ongoing feud. And I think that causes, after, what was it? What was it at Mark's Club the other night? It was sort of 1 p.m. It was very late. Yeah, we we played a lot of backgammon. Mm -hmm. We smoked a couple of cigars mm -hmm. and you came out victorious and I hobbled home. <laughs> I said it was a documentary about booze. It's not. It's a documentary about me winning a backgammon. But at the same time, you must all grab yourself a bottle of the Negroni number one. And I think it's a fabulous way of starting things off. I think it's important for the rake to tap into and be part of movements within the kind of common cultural landscape. Uh, and I think this is a great way of starting it. We've done it with clothes, we do it with watches, and I think that something like this is a brilliant way of not only tapping into a community, but also helping bring it together yeah. and uh, do something brilliant. So perhaps what would be great is you could show us, you know, the ways that you would best enjoy drinking it because I you, I'm assuming you have an opinion on the matter. I, of course I do. Tom, I have an opinion on everything. I'm very opinionated. <laughs> Without further ado, to Jukes. Over there. No. Yes, right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't teach him anything. Yeah.